What's up guys and gals and welcome for the first time to a free tropico. In the previous episode we had thrown off the yoke of tyranny or that guy that gave us free money for the last, you know, ton of time. Honestly, if there was a guy that gave me $5,000 a year for free, I probably would just be like, yeah, sure. I, I will do whatever you say, I suppose. I will be your governor. But it wasn't good enough for El Presidente. We had to get ourselves nice and free. Our towers saw to that. They are now all dead and destroyed and we are a free sovereign nation. In this episode, we're going to continue on. We're going to keep on keeping on, just like we did previously. Basically, because Tropico, there's no breaks or anything like that. Like, you just need to take care of your business. Let's do reforestation on our logging camp, by the way, because we are looking like we are running out of trees very briefly, and I would hate for our plank-producing society to run out of wood to chop into thin planes to sell to other people. We also need to select a research, so we can do... Oop, I clicked the wrong thing here. Let's see, we can go with White Flag, which gives us an embassy and allows us to praise. I'm going to do that because I enjoy the praising system a lot. Actually, let's do electricity first. That's going to be the most important right now because we have a monetary surplus. I also want to start setting up trade in that case. Oh, we have no trade offers yet. We'll have to wait a minute. I need to get some trade offers in for coal because we're going to have to import that because it doesn't appear as though we have any coal mines. The communist and the capitalist argued whether the island's rum should be distributed among the thirsty according to their needs or be sold on the free market. Well, I'd hate to take sides and spoil their fun, so let me invite you to the Jolly Roger, where everyone is served according to their needs, as long as they pay for their drinks. Yay, the Jolly Roger. And so now we have that radio free whatever lady. I can't tell if she's on my side or not. Half the time she seems pretty happy with me. Half the time she seems like she wants to have me assassinated. So I don't know. Uh, women's. I need to put in a road that's going to start making use of this land up here. And I'd actually love for this to run right by the iron mine. We'll take it as far as we can, but I wanted to set up the next branch of our city over here around the iron mine because we are getting into the World War period, as they said, which means that we're going to have to start choosing a side. It's going to be very difficult for us to stay neutral. Now, at this point in the game, we're going to start receiving donations from both the Allies and the Axis, and those are going to increase or diminish based on who we kind of placate and who we kiss ass to and who we wear out the knee pads for. On this side of our city, I think it's probably a good idea to start fiddling with a few more farms. Because when you have a farm, obviously you should fiddle on it because it seems like the right thing to do. Every farm comes with a porch, so you might as well get out on that thing and start fiddling or playing a banjo or doing something. That's what I would do. I want a banjo super bad. I can't wait. When I learn how to play banjo, it's going to be the stuff. That's one of those small things in life that like you say you're going to do and then you never get around to. So, since we have a giant surplus of cash right now, this boat's about to come in and give us 35 grand more. Oh my god. Alright, well we're about to make a ton of money. And I'm thinking... Why not? Let's go ahead and increase the budgets, by the way, on everything that I may have missed thus far. I want to make sure that everybody's able to live in happiness in Tropico because election seasons are coming. I'm not doing it for an altruistic reason. I'm doing it because I honestly and truly believe that I need to make... Oh, we need to handle schooling. That's what we need first. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go to, well, we'll do a police station first. And so the police station will go right here in this little red area because that's where it's needed most. And the next thing that we need to do is let's start educating our citizens. Let's make sure that they've got the education that they need. So I'm going to take a road and we're just going to build it down right here. And it's going to be kind of a dead end road, which is the worst kind of road to be on in a lot of cases. But... It's a necessary road. We're going to go to our research and education, and we're going to put in a high school right there. And once the high school is in place, this means that we can start manufacturing our own educated citizens, which is a that's it's an important part of your society, believe it or not. It's something that does need to get handled. So we're going to go ahead, and it's going to guarantee that we have high school educated workers. Is that John Wayne right there? It looks like all of our military guys are John Wayne. Are you guys seeing that? That's what it looks like to me. And then with this extra little space right here, I know exactly how we can use it. We can use it to drop a few more houses in there to make sure that our homelessness does not stay too high. 
And I'll drop a few more right there as well. I don't know if people are going to be able to access those, but they're about as crammed as tight as they can possibly be. And in the interest of saving space and making sure that our society looks good, I'm willing to do it. Over here on this side is where we're going to put in a college on the next cycle of imports. So we're already up to like 28,000. We can also start working with industry the moment that we get some electricity. Unfortunately for right now, we don't have any electricity. I'm going to be running our society off coal power. Ah, All right. I remember my own high school years. I was an acne-covered menace back then. The head cheerleader once stole my jock boyfriend, Raul. So I made her eat her own pom-poms. Then I said to Raul, you can't dump me. I'll dump you. And promptly pushed him in a cesspit. Luckily, I've changed for the better since then. All right, and so we have all these different things right here, and I'm going to explain briefly the way that trading works. So you have ships, which handle your trading. You have contracts, and then you have imports, and you have exports. This is a new system that's never been touched on before in Tropico, so I do want to give it the proper time of day and make sure that everyone is appraised as to how it works. You've got different tabs. You've got agriculture. You've got mining and logging. You've got industry goods. You've got luxury goods. And so these are all things that you can export and import. Now, in the case of what we're trying to do is we need to run our power plant off of coal, and we have no supply of coal. And so I think that's Venezuela. I think, yeah, that's Venezuela. Okay, so that's going to be Venezuela. We can import coal from Venezuela for $600 per import. So we get 1,000 units for 600 So their prices are actually raised slightly right now by about 20%. There's two months of travel time, and the contract... You sign a contract on this. Let's see here. How long is the contract for? Oh, I think this is a one-time deal. Never mind. Well, it automatically assigned a ship to that. We have the Mary Jane, which is actually pretty hilarious, considering that's a massive weed joke. So the Mary Jane is handling all of our weed and all of our imports of coal, I suppose. And we're now amassing coal for the future. I wanted to do that in the previous episode, but we didn't have any trade routes ready to go. And I wanted to start getting a big pile of coal going so that when we have a power plant, we don't have to worry about running out of coal anytime soon. The great communist revolution started in Russia. Unfortunately, it was a resounding success. Now they have no one to revolt against. All right, and so we can pay to import revolution into our own location. Which means that we're going to get a ton of revolutionaries, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. It sort of depends. Let's close this for a second. Let's see how our approval rating is with the revolutionaries before we do anything of that nature. So our approval rating with the revolutionaries is going to be, let's see. We have communists. We are beloved by the communists, but they are not our maximum faction. In fact, the religious are our largest faction right now. And so it's in our best interest to import as much revolution as we can. So if we import communism, it's going to give them the majority of the voters. This is a bad thing. We don't want this to continue. This is We don't want the religious in our state right now because we have chosen a bunch of edicts which basically make them standoffish. That's a big, big problem for us because they were our majority group of people. And so in order to keep them placated, we need healthcare as well. So let's focus on that. And there goes our next cycle of exports. We've got $36,000 coming in right now, assuming that they're able... Oop, let's make sure that our dock is doing better as well. There we go. So we're making a little bit of money. Let's go ahead and plop some clinics around everywhere so everybody can get those weird bumps and rashes checked out. This is going to take educated workers, by the way. So unfortunately, we don't have a ton of those. But we'll put one of these on every street corner that we can manage. I think four clinics should probably get us by. And then maybe we'll put a clinic. We've got one there. We've got one here. We've got one there. I'm saving this space for like a TV station or something. Although... It's a tough call. It's a really tough call. I'm going to sneak a clinic in then... I don't know. We'll put one out here in the boonies to help out the rural people, I guess. Yeah. There we go. We're not going to have enough people to actually work in any of those buildings because I don't think we're educating fast enough right now. Our high school. There we go. Let's go ahead and increase the budget to that. I need to make sure all the budgets are increased right there on the country houses. We can also start giving these guys modernizations if we wanted to. Or B, 
we can start electrifying them, which is going to be a giant pain in the ass. There is no simple way to give electricity to all of your houses right now. It's just you have to go through and click one by one on every single one. I'll probably do it in between an episode or something like that. And once we get that all taken care of, that'll increase the happiness and the way in which they live by quite a substantial amount. How come our cotton plantation has no workers? What's going on here? That's a weird group of events that I'm not really sure how to deal with. I should probably make some amendments to our constitutional edicts. Let's go ahead and take a look at our constitution, and we're going to amend it from an atheist state to, oh, we can't amend the constitution for four years. All right, so we've got a little bit of a problem right there. We can't amend too much. Let's import revolution, then. Revolution. The revolution is its own reward, but have a little something extra from its fruits. We're going to go ahead and say more communists on the island. We could do tenement housing, but I don't think tenement housing... Electricity! It's like organized lightning. There's no better way to put it. And you can make your own with a balloon and a little friction. Just like making fart noises. <laughs> Alright, so the next thing that we want to take care of is we want to go with praise and embassy because that's going to allow us to smoochy smooch the hind ends of all of our followers, which doesn't lead to the most amazing dental hygiene. However, it does allow us to make sure that in the last minute we can make those giant presidential speeches, which sway people over to our side if we need like that extra swing vote. We've got 23 new citizens on our island. You can see that our approval rating went up. That's probably going to be due to the fact that we just imported a whole bunch of new communists. So yeah, we went from 80 communists up to 114. So we got a bunch of new communists, or like 104 up to 100. I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. The capitalists aren't liking us right now either. The militarists would probably be happy if we could give them some other things. Well, yeah, I'm thinking the best thing we could do right now is amend the constitution to give a secular state. So that'll bring the religious and the militarists up slightly. We'll amend it. We'll amend it in the next uh, election cycle. And I think that'll work out to our benefit. At the moment, we don't really have to worry about revolution anyways because we have so many towers that they're gonna get wiped out if they try anything in the first place. So no biggie right there. Let me go ahead and use manure fertilizers right here to make the plantations that are nearby better. And do we have workers here now? I hope that we do. Oh, good. Our cotton plantation is up and running one more time. So now, the investment of the season is going to be us putting in a power plant, which is going to cost us $12,000. Are we... When's our next ship? Our next ship is coming in in two months. We can also start putting in garages, by the way. I forgot to do that. We should start putting in parking lots so people can get around town. So there's a parking lot right there. We should drop a parking lot out here somewhere to make life a little bit easier. Although there's not really any space for it, unfortunately. My most ardent hope is that I could plant it right here if I needed to, but it doesn't seem to like that plan, so we'll put it right here. And a further bit of transportation couldn't hurt over here on this side of town either. Just making sure that we have the garage that we need so that people with cars can get around instead of all the foot traffic that we're looking at right now. We want to make sure that we have mobile traffic, automobiles running all over town. And that's going to help us just keep people mobile, get them from their jobs back and forth in between the days. Because those are legitimate things that become problems as the game develops and becomes more mature. Looks like we are doing our exports right now, so let's go ahead and do the power plant as well. The power plant can go just about anywhere, honestly. I think right there's a pretty good spot for it. It's not going to be nuclear power, so... Well, we could put it on the outskirts in the second area over here and just hope that this works out. But that would that would really force us to kind of supplant a whole society over here before the power plant gets up. So I think I am going to go with this right here. We're going to keep it on coal power. And this should get built... I don't know how long this is going to take, but it should take a reasonably long amount of time. I think it's going to take us about a year to get it built. The Allies are going to send us a little bit of cash now. The Axis should also be spent a little bit of money inside of our borders in good faith. There's our import ship right there that's brought back a little bit of coal for us. Our imports are already up to $12,000. Hopefully our next exports will be at twenty dollars or $30,000. One can hope, one can dream. And then after that, we're going to start building up our industrial complex. And so we want to make sure that we have a textile factory. We're going to make sure that we have a cannery. We're going to make sure that we have a couple other things as well. Now that we have bought the revolution, we can export it to other brother and sister countries. 
Okay, and we're gonna accept that because we are gonna be making a cannery pretty soon. Just not right this second. We also want to make a college, so I think we'll probably... Yeah, there's a little bit of cash right there, an infusion, a monetary infusion, which is always a good thing. I'm gonna build a college. Can we even make a college yet? I think it's gonna be... There we go. Let's do a college right here. Yeah, that looks gorgeous. Perfect amount of space. I couldn't have asked for a better situation. And so in building a college... Ah, there it is. And so we do want to set a manager over here. We'll say that a union leader is probably what we want to go for. Actually, let's go for effectiveness so that we get more electricity out of it. We don't have anybody to work there right now. So we're going to have to wait briefly until we have college-educated people to work there. We can import workers just like we could previously by clicking this little button down here at the bottom. But we don't have the money to import any workers. So we're just going to have to wait on that for the time being. All right. And we're looking pretty good right now. We're looking pretty swell. Our approval rating is 73%, which is just crazy. And right as I say that they're going to drop it down to 72%, it's okay. We'll make it all work. Looks like we already have another export cycle. That ship came a lot quicker than I expected. That's actually a bad thing. Let's go ahead and get some college students. I'm going to say... Power plant still has nobody working there, but it looks like all of our college-educated people have actually jumped straight into educating more college-age people, which is a good thing. That's going to help us out. Over here on this side, our clinic has nobody to work at it. That's because we ran out of college-age workers. It's kind of that beginning of an industrialized nation thing that we've got going on where we don't have the workers that we necessarily need to do the educated labor. So we've just got to wait on it. That's all that we can do is just wait a little bit. We should have elections coming up pretty soon, I think. I don't know where it says that. They've moved things around since the previous game. Religious happiness is pretty low. We probably want to work on that in the next election cycle. But as for right now, I'm liking it. I'm really, really liking our little patch of heaven here that's been made in our image. It's it's going precisely the way that I would hope that it would. Let's make sure that everybody's happy. We didn't manage to get any research done. So, we decided to steal France's greatest achievements. Unfortunately, we broke into their museum of military accomplishments and all I found was this white flag. It seems we will have to work on our diplomacy skills. Yikes, taking them cheap shots. But anyways, we've got... I've been sitting left and right, and I haven't confessed my... President, Tropicans await elections next year. They wish to show their everlasting love and respect for you. They may have used different words, but that does not matter. Okay, we will give them an election because I want to amend that constitution. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that the game does manipulate the polls a little bit to make the game more difficult. I've seen myself drop from 70 to 51 instantly the second that it's election season. And I don't know if that's just based on the fact that somebody else is competing with you now. Or if it's just, you know, the game trying to make itself more difficult. Because in the original Tropicos 3 and 4, it was very, very easy to keep yourself in business. Like, nobody really even bothered you once you were all set up. We need to unlock some constitutional options. So that's what we're going to do next. We have 68% of the vote, which is insane as far as national polls go. A commoner knocked at my door yesterday asking if I had a moment to talk about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right, so what he's saying is that he's giving us a quest to make the religious more happy. And if we can pull that off, we get 15 standing with their faction on the whole. I'm going to accept that one because it's one that I think we can easily accomplish. Well, hello there, old pal. America is all gloomy and doomy at the moment. I can't have that. If there's one thing I can't abide, it's mopery. Well, if you need your mopery dispelled, we will export you some fruit hopery. And so we're going to export 10,000 fruit to the allies to get plus 20. It's not going to hurt us with the axis, though, so we should be all right. If it hurt us with the axis, I'd probably just be like, yeah, piss off and just send them off to the wind. Because I am trying to play both sides right now. Until somebody gives you a better offer, that's almost always what you should be focusing on, is basically playing both sides. Let's hire a couple people to work here because we have the money to do so. And once they get here, we need to get electricity going so that we can start building our industry. Let's take a look at our citizens as well and figure out how many of them are educated. We have 14 unemployed people, the majority of which are illiterate, which means we should probably set up a new farm. Open jobs are almost all for college-age people. We have a pretty good problem with homelessness right now. So let's work on that. 
I think I'll probably put in tenement housing around somewhere. I would prefer... I would really prefer to do... Oh, actually, let's do houses. We'll do generic houses for right now. We do have some space for them right here. So let's go ahead and squeeze them in as best as we can. On every street corner if we can get it to work. There it is. And so with a few extra houses, that'll lead to some vacancies in some of these houses, which will then lead to people living in these ones. So the people that are too wealthy will jump into these houses. The people who are not wealthy at all will jump into the other one. And there you go. You get the idea. We make vacancies where we can. Oh, that actually cost us a little bit of cash. Okay. Well, we are financially broke at the moment. So hopefully our exports can make up for that fact. They may or may not. I think we've just about hit the equilibrium. So basically what happens with Tropico is you have times of feast and you have times of famine. We are about to hit the times of famine, I think. And so it's going to be in our best interest to make sure that we're expanding our industry a little bit further to stay ahead of the curve with regards to the amount of debt and the amount of deficit that we're accruing. So yeah, our export cycle right here was very, very ineffective. And I don't know if that was due to the fact that we had a little bit of a down period right there. But we may find ourselves very, very much in debt in the next period. There we go. We have people working at our power plant now, which is good. So what I want to do is let's think Free about... ...opportunity to influence the outcome of coming elections. Strictly speaking, this is not considered exactly legal, but I guarantee that no one will find out. We're going to say win without cheating because we don't need to. We have 70% of the popular vote right now. Cheating would be totally and completely pointless. Well, all we can hope for right now... There we go. So we're getting our foreign aid. The allies have sent us 4,000. The access should follow suit. The election results are in. Let me be the first to congratulate you, Presidente. Okay. And so this 167 Tropicans have given the correct answer and voted for you. Awesome. So we've managed to stay Presidente for a little while longer. Exports are at 14,000. We're definitely going to have to get industry growing pretty soon. I don't know if that's due to the fact that maybe we ran out of planks. How's our reforestation going? Either way, we're back into the black right now, and that means that we need to get our hands dirty building something that's going to make us a little bit of money. And in fact, we may even have to wait until the next cycle. 20000 worth, and then we just imported more coal. The input is looking okay. If you're looking to what you need, look right here. Every building has its input, which is the object that it requires in order to keep producing output. Right now, our output is based on the amount of coal that we have and also the amount of workers. So keep that in mind. However, we have plenty of coal right now. So, wow, we have actually spent all of our money already. So we are actually riding the line right now. We need to be very, very careful about the way that we deploy our next few buildings to dig ourselves out of this because we are basically stagnant at the moment. We're breaking even essentially on each cycle until we get like a really, really big export, which could be this one right here. I don't know. Good job. It didn't have any effect whatsoever. And the country is still officially in a state of depression, but the effort is very much appreciated. Let's try, since they're in a depression, as I recall, during that time period, you tried to put people back to work by increasing the amount of social programs. They created like build a park programs and things like that. So I'm going to say where the government actually started hiring people, as I recall, and then World War II helped dig us out. I could be completely and totally wrong right here. I'm not a historian. I love history classes, but I'm not a historian. So as I recall, that's basically the way that they try to take the edge off the depression between the war and also creating social programs that put people back to work. So let's try for... Government spending. I don't see how foreign trade is going to help because if they're in a depression, I mean, I guess they could focus on exports, but let's focus on government spending. I think that means they're going to send more money our way and we could definitely use it right now. We've got a little bit of money to spend. I'm going to hang tight right now and we're going to wait and see if we go broke right now before our next. It looks like we might. Presidente. I hereby with to four require you on the habeas cojones to execute a writ with a novation decreeing <laughs> a peres to one penultimo, if I refer to as the penultimate party. Should you fail to comply, you shall thereby to four be nonced as a tortfeasor, and the tropical people shall be taught the language of legalese. Yeah, the habeas cojones. I like that. I'm going to use that in the future. I'm like, I'm going to execute a writ of habeas cojones, punk. 
All right, we can actually amend our constitution now, which is exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to go to a secular state, which is going to make the religious a little bit happier. We're going to leave everything else the way that it is, and then we can also make addendums. And so we can make it a police state. Every policeman convinces one voter to vote for you. We can also go with mandatory honest elections through democracy, and we will have no uprisings. Or we can go with totalitarian. We're going to go with police state for now. We have happy childhood, which means that you have a late retirement, normal life expectancy, and job happiness. Okay, that works out. Immigrant nation. I'm going to go with a visa program to make it easier for educated citizens to join us. And so there it is. We have amended our constitution. We also have the issue of more research to be handled. I'm going to research... Let's go with tanks, because tanks are awesome right now. We'll go with delegation and alliances. We'll go with table manners. I don't know, we might be able to recover from this little downslope. I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Tropico 5. I'm going to hang out for just a minute and see if we can recover. Right now, everybody's happy, but we're also broke. So that's kind of one good thing, one bad thing. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.